Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. <clears throat> Walaikum Assalam wa rahmatullah. There's actually a lot of questions from people on this subject saying, but what if we were oppressed? There's like many questions asking the same. Yeah, again, uh, oppression like physical oppression, that's an obvious. No, no one's allowed to touch somebody, beat somebody, harm somebody. We're talking about egoism. So everyone in their personal being should understand that we're talking about egoism. So when you're at work and, and somebody's just bothering you, bothering you, bothering you, that's not oppression, that's just somebody bothering you. So remain quiet, remain quiet to the best that you can. If somebody come and begin to touch you, no that's not allowed. Then you seek the authorities and, and the, the way to, to move away from something like that. So every time we want to reply and, and most likely with uh, loved ones and family because they have all your buttons like root canal, which one really hurt the most? Your family are like dentists, they touch a wire into your nerve and your whole being is shaking for in one second. So that, that's what we're talking about, right? You, the, the mailman doesn't bother you that you're going to go out and, and to beat him up. But we're talking about issues where you know you feel you're being sparked, you feel that you're being angered and Allah has all those buttons so they know, okay press this one, this one, this one, that one <laughs> and it's on, you know when, it's <laughs> when you feel angry. Those are the things that we're trying to, to discuss and teach people that to be nothing, take a path in which to negate oneself, negate oneself. And this is the, the rule. Now there are exceptions, that's something else we can never address exceptions because it's just too many to, to go into. <clears throat> but the rule is don't give your ego any right. Don't answer for your ego, don't talk for your ego, don't try to explain on behalf of your ego. Oh I just have to let the shaykh know, for example. So you're wearing a blue suit, no, no. It's green. Why do you have to explain that? They say, alhamdulillah. Just an example, he may be wearing a blue suit. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's colorblind, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. You're just learning how to stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. In a world that teaches us, keep talking, keep saying everything, make every type of comment. For what do you have to make a comment? Because you're countering what shaitan is putting now on everything. Shaitan is doing actually the exact opposite to what we described last night. He's making women to be men and men to be women. Why? Because he knows this system. <clears throat> if you reverse the polarity of the charge then what happens? They're attracted to something else. But if you keep telling him, no, no you're a positive, you should be looking for the female charge and the female she's the powerful submission charge, you should be looking for the, a, a positive male charge. Shaitan comes and reverses their polarities and says, actually no to the woman, you're a man. And they begin to look like that and they, they change their charge and their polarity. So shaitan knows what he's doing and awliya also know what shaitan's doing. So their teachings are to counter that reality, inshaAllah. <coughs> Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, how to follow tariqah under a Wahhabi Imam, the head of the house? <laughs> you got it for yourself, the Allah going to make you like a charcoal. <laughs> they're going to burn you so bad these people, they're just, their teachings are tough, 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 tough and uh, you know maybe you get a very high darajat by staying quiet and staying quiet and, and keep your belief to yourself and hide your practices so that not to be physically oppressed by the, their, their anger until you have the ability to be free from that and have your own life. But as far as being under the roof of that type of oppression or that type of belief, stay quiet. And nobody has to know what you're doing to the best of your ability if you can, inshaAllah. What can you do? <coughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, can you please tell us a story of what happened when a person went against Shaykh Nazim? No, better not to. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't good. Uh, Shaykh Nazim, because they're, they're very humble, so they would never say anything. As a result, people thought they could always be rude to them. And uh, yeah, and, and more high scale 
things, people started to do rude things. But their end was very bad. And there was one who also came against Mawlana like that, very bad, very bad words, very bad talking. And one day he went out and riding ATVs and he went into a hole, perished in a, in a very bad way. And this was the same one who was always saying, bad, bad, bad. Means and this deen and the religion is real. Be careful of the ones whom Allah loves and you know them by their character. They're not the, the ones whom are aggressive and vociferous and fighting and fighting and fighting. They're trying not to be, they're trying to be quiet. But the danger of their silence is what you should be worried about. And that's a, a reality in which all can achieve. So if we stay silent, stay silent, let Allah take care of everything. And to every degree, I mean in the family he'll resolve it in a different way because he's not going to throw them off a mountain. But they're going to have issues if they continue to fight like that and you stay quiet. Allah will resolve it so that people understand. And they know in their heart when Allah is beginning to squeeze them. They understand that they're doing something wrong. So everything works itself out when we stay quiet. But when we start to get back and to argue, the issue and the real issue now became confused. Because he said, she said, he said, which one did it now? But when the, the one whom is staying quiet, it's clear that one is staying quiet. So alhamdulillah it's the building of good character. <coughs> uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa uh, Should we also keep quiet in the internal struggle against the satanic whispers? How is the appropriate adab for the internal struggle dialogue? What do you mean? What can you do that's not quiet? You can't scream, you can't tell anyone. That's what we told, don't, don't journal. Don't journal things that are of no necessary that, oh I did this, I have this desire, I want to do this, I want to do that. Don't take what shaitan is whispering into you and you're trying to keep and fight the whisper and make it to now manifest. Don't write things that manifest bad things. So when you want to write, you write knowledges and realities and, and good things that bring a positive energy and ma manifest that energy upon yourself and upon your kitab. Whatever you write is written now onto your kitab. So anything of a negative nature, our whole life is that, is fighting negative. So every time you hear even a talk like this, especially talk like this about being quiet, uh, every type of waswas -was is coming and thinking of thousand different scenarios, the nafs is now trying to talk to everyone, saying, don't be quiet for this issue, don't be quiet for that issue and giving all sorts of excuses. But there is no excuse. If you, if you truly understand that Allah does not care about your life, the conditions of all of these different… Allah cares, what are you doing about your soul going into the grave? He's not conditioned, he's not worrying about the issues in the house and this like this, he said like this, but they're doing like this, it's like this. Allah is asking each individual person, I'm only worried about the condition of your soul in the grave. So then that's a very neutral judge because then all that's going to come onto this trial is that what is the condition of your grave? Every time you're fighting and arguing and yelling, Whatever you think you're resolving with Allah you're going to have a difficulty. So worry about the condition of your grave. When we truly understand that, that, Ya Rabbi I want my grave to be illuminated, stay quiet. I want my grave to be filled with light, stay quiet. And then you stay quiet and you know, cuckooness of people begin to come out and you learn your best to stay quiet and Allah ufa with the amri in Allah. In Allahu basirun bil ibad. For verily Allah sees the condition of His servant. That's why this du'a is always made by us, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al-Asbab, Ya Mufatih abwab, Ya Muqalib al-Qulubi wal absab Ya Dalil al-Mustahidin, Ya Ghiyat al-Mustaghithin, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Dhu Jalali wal Ikram, Ufawd Amri in Allah, Ufawd Amri in Allah, In Allahu basirun bil ibad. Every time there would be a fight, you begin to make this du'a, Ya Rabbi you see my condition, I'm being overwhelmed by this negativity, there's too much. 
And if it's too much, go to your carpet, cry and pray and you feel the embrace of Allah Don't worry, we're raising you because for every condition Allah already sent. He said, I sent this condition for, uh, for you to walk through a door to receive your reward. But you're not walking through the door, you're going in a different uh, direction to make a fight. So Allah made a condition for us to achieve a reward because everything comes from Allah Can anything come to you that's not from Allah Anything. You think a fly can come in your direction that Allah didn't write it? It's impossible because the fly has atoms and these atoms have electrons. If these electrons were all random then the movement of anything would have exploded everything. Forget about the form. If you go to the sub-form, these electrons are moving at hundreds of thousands of kilometers per second or whatever their speed is. For it to just move like this, how that electron of the fly didn't hit you and hit your atomic reality and blow the whole place up? Because Allah says, everything is like a, on a train on a track. There's not a single thing that's moving that Allah didn't write it. That's when you say, SubhanAllah, this is Allahu Akbar because it's not something that can be even understood. But it's subatomic reality explains it much better. All these electrons, where they're going? How are they moving like this? And not one colliding, nothing random, everything is written. Okay, everything's written then, Ya Rabbi, wa fawd amri. You wrote it, you see my condition, am I passing? You made the condition, I'm going through that door for success. That's what we're trying to achieve, inshaAllah. We achieve it. The more we achieve it, the more we achieve it, the more we achieve it, you reach towards lights and energies, beatific dress, beatific blessings. At the same time you're running towards the love of Prophet asking Prophet that, please intercede for me, put your nazar upon me, things are difficult. And that love of Prophet if you begin to come close to you, now big time you have Allah's attention, big time you have Allah's attention. Because the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is around you. Then who, who's with, uh, with Prophet is Allah If you were able to get the attention and the love of Prophet into your life on issues with your salawats, your durood, your, all the things that you're supposed to be doing, say, Ya Rasul Kareem, this difficulty is heavy for me, please help me. And you make your salawats and your expression of love, the nearness of Prophet comes or then you have a mighty support, Ya Surqullahu Nasran Aziza that Allah said, we're going to support you with my Sifat al-Aziz, my might and majesty will be right there supporting you. And that's why this is the system of awliya, why they're like the way they are and those whom followed them and loved them and followed their way was that they followed the same system. They submitted, they loved Prophet they learn how to stay quiet. As a result there is a tremendous energy around them. As a result of that energy every difficulty begins to get solved because that love of Allah is there because the love of Prophet is there and everything is based on that love and it resolves everything. These mushkil gusha, all these nat and all these salawats, everything that's being recited is a confirmation of these realities, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaam <coughs> Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam uh, I'm new, uh, how to remove black magic? What can we do? Seems like nothing in life is working out. You have to help me at NurMuhammad.com. For every condition Allah provided an opening. So when people are in these types of difficulties, Allah inspires them to move towards these people who have a solution. So then you email, help me at Nur Muhammad and we begin to teach you that you have to have the taweez, you have to learn the meditation, you have to learn how to make your connection, you have to learn how to make the connection with the shaykhs, to be with them at all times, to feel their energy, their fires and their dress. Because Allah kunu ma sadiqeen that have taqwa and keep the company of God-conscious people. 
But Allah doesn't care for the material world, so this must be a, a, a command that has to do with the world of light. Means in this world of light, keep your God consciousness and always keep the company of these servants of Allah So then in your world of light with your soul you want to always be in their company. As a result of being in their companies like what we just described, the energy that begins to come around your soul begins to resolve many issues. Things that are fighting you can't fight them and things that fight them Prophet comes to their rescue and things that are trying to come against is not even possible. It doesn't go any higher than that, means if the presence of Prophet comes that is the, the najat of Allah that is the salvation of Allah if the reality of Prophet takes your case and approaches you, what shaitan can come near you? Nothing, nothing, nothing has any power except that it takes its power from that reality. But if that reality approaches the servant then every difficulty begins to push away. And only difficulty they have is for training so that they can reach these realities. Otherwise it can't be just ease, there has to be a training in which the servant going through difficulty and understands that you're in a sparring and you have to learn how to spiritually fight. If you don't learn how to spiritually fight then it's very dangerous because of all the things that we're seeing. So I say all the people now with all the markings on their bodies they look like lizards. I don't think it's a coincidence, you know. The ink they put on themselves, excessive amount all over their body and their faces now and their necks and all of them, they look like a lizard. Because the jinn that are in them they like that fashion, they probably don't like our skin. They say, why did you have to have such nice white skin clean and all this like this? <laughs> I'm going to make you green. They have all these markings on it because the jinn inside these people, what they're doing to them. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam So, can meditation be done in a room where there are toys, showpieces, animal, human faces? Faces, yes, it's not a problem about the faces and, and some, you know, moderate toys and stuff. But you try to, to keep it in a, in a respectful part and you clean it, make it perfumed and, and make it to be something uh, of a beatific energy. If you pray there, meditate there and Allah will send saintly souls that are in the area, they'll come to pray there to lend that blessing to that location. So this was always Mawlana Shaykh's teaching that anytime you set up something for Allah that I'm making this section as a masjid Ya Rabbi, I want to pray and meditate in this location and connect my heart. As soon as we begin to do those practices and it's a place that you know we can keep clean and free from things that are not pleasing to Allah then only Allah in the area will stop to pray there and that's from the different categories of awliya. There can be the category of jinn and ins and budal, nujab, nuqab, awtad wal akhyar. InshaAllah, malaika wa jinn inshaAllah. And that's what makes the house to be very powerful. It's because of their practices in the house then all the mu'min beings that come to also lend their energy and their support. Then they begin to reside within the house of those whom have their taweezes. With the sajil and the taweezes are flags from awliya. That the, the, be, the beings that are in those associations when the shaykh's taweezes are being distributed, the spiritual beings that accompany those will be accompanying those taweezes and they begin to reside in that residence and clean out anything that's nefarious, inshaAllah. Say so the people are, people are uh, giving a lot of thanks Thank you. for everything well, that you've done and a uh, lot of solutions have been found from your teachings and people asking for bayat. InshaAllah. The bayat now we do bayat and then we do the khatma khalch again, inshaAllah. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين يبيعونك يبيعون الله يا الله فوق أيديهم فما نقاذ فإنما ينغوث على نفسي ومن أوفى بما أهد عليه الله فسيئة أجرا عظيما رضيتم بالله ربا وإسلام دينا بسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رسول والنبي وبقران كتابا والله من نقول وكيل وحمد لله رب العالمين وقبلنا بسيدنا سلطان الأولياء مع شيخ محمد نازم عادل حكاني شيخنا ومرشيدنا ومعنا شيخ محمد عادل شيخنا ومرشيدنا في بركة أولياء الله مولانا شيخ الشام كباني شيخ عدنان كباني والله من نقول وكيل الله 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 حق الله 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 حق الله 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 حق حق يا ربي يا الله إلا شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلي أصحابي الكرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العالية خاصة روح ممتلك غوت خليك شان نشبن محمد ويسع البخاري سلطان أولياء الشيخ عبد الله فايز الداغستاني سلطان أولياء الشيخ محمد نازم عادل حكاني مولانا شيخ الشام كباني شيخ عدنان كباني شيخ محمد عادل مع عبد خالق الخجدواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام وسيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا أبو بكر الصديق سيدنا أمة سيدنا عثمان إمام الحسن عليه السلام إمام الحسين عليه السلام وسيداتنا فاطمة الزهراء عليه الصلاة والسلام وسائر وسادتنا والصديقين الفاتحة الصناعة.